Hi, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to Crime Busters 101. I post solved and unsolved and crime-related topic on a weekly basis and also true crime and murder documentaries, so if that's something that might interest you, please subscribe and hit that notification button. Every case is unique and will have you on the edge of your seat, so enjoy the videos and remember viewer discretion is advised on all my videos, and if you are commenting, please be kind. Thank you, stay safe, this is 15 details they left out on the disappearance of Madeline McCann. Madeline disappeared on May 3rd, 2007, from a hotel room in Portugal, and there is a Netflix documentary series about it. It's an unfortunate reality that sometimes children go missing, and the truth is that some cases are more high-profile and talked about than others. Most people would say that the most well-known case is that of Madeline McCann, comma, Madeline disappeared on May 3, 2007, from a hotel room in Portugal. She was there on a family trip with her twin siblings and her parents, and people have been talking about this ever since. It has been over 10 years, and there is still no consensus about what occurred that day. But there is a Netflix documentary series about it. The disappearance of Madeline McCann started streaming on the service in March 2019, and there are eight episodes in the first season. It's not a big surprise the documentary series about Madeline McCann was released on the popular platform, as there is such a large mystery surrounding the toddler's disappearance, but some people might say that there are more questions than answers at this point. Like other true crime movies, TV series, or podcasts, there is a lot that wasn't talked about in this eight-part series. Read on to find out 15 details they left out on the disappearance of Madeline McCann. Number 1. The parents weren't part of the Netflix doc series via Digital Spy. According to MamaMia.com.au, Madeline McCann's parents weren't part of the Netflix documentary series. Her mom and dad, Kate and Jerry McCann, decided not to be on it and they said, We did not see and still do not see how this program will help the search for Madeline and particularly given there is an active police investigation, could potentially hinder it. If the parents had been involved with the series, whether by producing it and or appearing on it, it seems like it would have been very different. It seems like this is a pretty big missing element since people would want to hear from the parents. Number 2. The parents' stories didn't always add up in the beginning via evening standard. If we are familiar with the true crime genre, then we know that when someone gives a statement to the cops or a detective, they should definitely stick to that same story. The people looking into a case need to figure out the timeline of events, so this is very important. Something else that we should know about this case is that it seems that Madeline's mother, Kate, said a few different things about that night. MamaMia.com.au quoted someone who tweeted after watching the documentary series. They wrote, the initial story has changed multiple times. They said that Kate said someone had jimmied the window slash blinds open and climbed in through the window. The tweet continued, there were no signs of a break in. Number three, Madeleine said something weird to her mom the morning before she disappeared via the son Kate McKinn published a book called Madeline, Our Daughter's Disappearance and the Continuing Search for Her in 2011. According to Express.co.uk, Kate wrote in the book about something weird that her daughter said to her the morning that she disappeared. Kate said, at breakfast time, Madeline had a question for us. Why didn't you come when Sean and I cried last night? It's definitely confusing to hear about this, and there is really no way to know why she said this. If this had been the focus of an episode of the documentary series, then maybe we would have some more insight into it. It seems like an important detail that was left out. What if a child psychologist or therapist had been interviewed about what that could have meant? 1720th, it seems the parents went out for dinner without the kids more than once via RTE people focus on the fact that Madeline McCann's parents went out for dinner while she and her twin siblings stayed in the hotel room. As it turns out, her parents went out for dinner without the kids more than once. But since the series is mostly about details that everyone knows about, this was something that was left out. According to Express.co.uk, 
Kate went on to detail how the remark had made her wonder if her daughter had cried while they were out for dinner, which was concerning to her. She added, Jerry and I were disconcerted. Could Madeline and Sean have woken up while we were at dinner? Number 4 The Netflix series literally tells the story that everyone already knows. Via People the tab quotes a writer for The Guardian who called the disappearance of Madeline McCann a simple retelling and said it was purely a rehashing of everything anyone who was alive at the time or who has been of an age to understand the periodic appeals on anniversaries, birthdays, and other painful dates by the McCanns for more information in the 12 years that have elapsed since already knew. It seems that the documentary series is simply saying what people already know about the case, so anyone who has been following it ever since that day in May of 2007 wouldn't find out anything new. The documentary series definitely left out any new facts that people would want to hear about. Number 5. People have many ideas about what could have happened, and unfortunately, the series doesn't talk about them all. Via People the series also left out various ideas surrounding Madeline McCann's disappearance. As the tab says, these are the nine theories about what happened to Maddie McCann. Only some are explored in the Netflix doc. It says in the documentary, the value that Madeline had was really high. While this might be true because, again, we don't know what happened, we also have to wonder if this makes sense. Is it really the most plausible and likely outcome? If we're familiar with other TV shows and movies that are part of the true crime genre, we might wonder why this editorial choice was made. Number 7. The media coverage became very sensational and intense. Via E. Something that people should know about this case is that the media coverage became very intense and sensational. In fact, it could be argued that this is the most crucial aspects of the case. As the Atlantic says, but the institution that profited the most, and the one that's never really been held to account for how wildly it behaved during that period, is the tabloid press. What if the series had a totally different focus and tone, and instead of talking about what happened that night and the investigation that followed, it was only about the media coverage? That would have been a new detail. Number 8. The doc says people should come forward with info, but a lot of people already have. Via Evoke.ie Really a question that has no answer as of yet. Number 10. The mom wouldn't reply to 48 questions. Via Mia. Well, 48 questions is a lot, and it makes sense that in a missing persons case like this one, people would have to answer a ton of questions. According to The Sun, a list of questions that Kate McCann refused to answer during police questions has recently emerged, published first by The Independent. Kate used her right to silence in 2007. People are wondering why Kate didn't answer these 48 questions, and this is another question that we have even after watching the documentary series, The Disappearance of Madeline McCann. Why wouldn't she want to answer these questions? Wouldn't it have been better to answer them? Number 11. Why was a random woman brought up in the dock via the Times? As MamaMia.com.au says, in the documentary, a man recalls being in Barcelona on the night Madeline disappeared. He said he was walking along a street when a woman approached him. The woman had questions for him. Do you have the girl? Do you have my new daughter for me? He couldn't answer and she left. Why was this woman brought up in the documentary series, and shouldn't there have been a bigger explanation of who she is? It seems like a random detail to include, and what if this man wasn't actually telling the truth and wasn't a reliable person to talk to? Number 12. Top of seven members claimed they saw Robert Marat nearby, then said no they didn't. Via the Independent. Robert Murat was talked to in the early investigation of the case, and while he is mentioned in the documentary series, there are a few details that are left unexplained. According to MamaMia.com.au, there is one thing in particular that should have been a lot clearer. 
As the website says, several members of the Top of Seven said they had seen Robert Murat hanging around apartment 5A in the hours after Maddie was reported as missing. Murat said he was at his house all night and didn't know about the disappearance until early the next morning. He was later cleared of having any connection to Maddie's disappearance. The website asks, if Murat wasn't there, why did the Top of Seven say he was? Why were they so keen to point the finger at him? This is a really good question, and we wonder why this wasn't answered in the doc. Number 13. There is no discussion about why the parents are acting kind of strange. Via Lester Mercury. Something else that was left out of the series, the fact that the parents were acting kind of strange after this happened. Someone who posted in a Reddit thread thinks that this is because they are doctors. They wrote that people said the parents acted this way because they felt bad for not checking up as often or thoroughly. They continued in their Reddit post, they're in a profession where you're taught to be in control your emotions in stressful situations. Their behavior is pretty on par for doctors. The series could have gone into detail about how doctors have to act detached and formal, and that could have been an interesting detail to include. Number 14. A girl actually tried to say that she's Madeline, and that wasn't explored. Via News Hub. Something else that was left out of the documentary series is the fact that a girl said that she was actually Madeline McCann. This turned out not to be true, and she was trying to be funny, and, of course, there is absolutely nothing funny about this. As NewsHub.co.nz said in 2017, Harriet Brooks sent a message to a friend claiming to be the missing child because of similar birthmarks on her eye and leg. If the series included an episode focusing on all of the people who said that they had seen the child in various places, then the girl pretending to be her could have been mentioned in that episode as well. Number 15. The mom's behavior when it happened is confusing via Harold's son. It seems that people think that the mom's behavior on the night that her daughter disappeared is pretty confusing. As someone posted in a Reddit thread, did Kate run back to the group or did they come running when she started screaming? The documentary seemed to say both. The series could have gone deeper into how Kate actually acted the night that this happened. Doesn't anyone know whether she told her husband and friends about what was going on, or they heard her, as the Reddit poster pointed out? Why wasn't this cleared up? Some people might say that your memory of a tough and sad event isn't always perfect, which is true, but it still seems like a crucial detail. Thank you for watching Crime Busters 101. I post solved and unsolved and crime related topic on a weekly basis so if that's something that you are interested in please subscribe and hit that notification button.